equations by factoring. Uh, we'll have quadratic equations and then we'll have one problem that's uh, we'll have to solve by factor by grouping. Uh, it won't. It's not a quadratic equation. It has a a third power. But let's get started on this. We have. In this first problem, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So whenever you're solving a quadratic equation, you want to get everything to one side and set it equal to 0. Okay? And we'll go ahead and take the x squared plus 5x plus 6 and we'll factor it. So to factor it, we have x, x plus 3 and plus 2. Then once we have it factored we need to take each part the x plus 3 and the x plus 2 and set each one equal to 0. So we have x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus x plus 2 equals 0 and then we solve each one of these equations separately. So here we subtract 3 to both sides. We get x equal negative 3. Here we subtract 2 to both sides. And so we get x equal negative 2. So our solution, solution set is negative 3, negative 2. And there's our answer. Uh, if you... I'm not going to go over how to factor. Uh, to do this, you should already know how to factor. If you need some assistance on, on factoring, I have a series of videos on that. You can take a look at them, and that goes into how to factor. So let's take a look at this one. We have 2x squared minus x minus 6. So let's go ahead and factor it. So I've got 2x x and then I've got 2 alright and then we'll have uh, the 3 here and we'll have minus and plus so I get 2x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0 so I solve each equation separately so I get 2x equals negative 3 divide by 2 I get x equal negative 3 halves and here I add 2 to both sides I get x equal 2 so my solution set is negative 3 halves 2 and there's my answer alright let's take a look at some more now remember what I said earlier we want everything on one side of the equal sign set it equal to zero. So we need to get the 20 to the left hand side. So I'm going to subtract 20 to both sides. So I get a squared minus a minus 20 equals zero. Now I can factor it. So I get a a minus 5 plus 4. I have a minus I have a minus 5 equals 0 or a plus 4 equals 0. Solve each one separately. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I get a equal 5. Here I'll subtract 4 to both sides. I get a equals negative 4. So my solution set would be negative 4, 5. Let's take a look at this one. Notice we have everything on one side of the equal sign, but we have this negative in front. And whenever you're factoring, it's a lot easier to factor when the number in front of your squared term is positive. So to get rid of the negative sign, we're going to divide everything by negative 1. You can divide everything by negative 1, or you can multiply everything by negative 1. It doesn't matter. So dividing each term by negative 1, that changes the sign of everything. Okay, now I can factor it. So to factor, I get uh, 2x, x, let's see, 5, 3, plus, minus. 
So I set each factor equal to zero or x plus five equals zero. So add three to both sides. I get two x equals three. Divide both sides by two, x equals three halves. Here I can subtract five to both sides. I get x equal negative five. So my solution would be negative five, three halves. Let's look at some more. Okay, get everything to one side. So here I'm going to add 7x. So I get x squared plus 7x equals 0. And then I factor. Well, here I can factor out a common factor of x. So that's x times x plus 7 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0. So this one's already solved. I get x equals 0. Here I subtract 7 to both sides. So I get x equal negative 7. So this gives me negative 7, 0 as my solution. All right, so let's take a look at another one. Uh, well, th I wrote this problem down wrong. That should be 4x cubed. Okay. So let's get everything to one side. So I get, subtract 3x squared to both sides. So that's going to give me negative 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus x equal 0. Now, when you're getting everything to one side, another thing you want to keep in mind, you want the largest power first, and you want to write it in descending powers. Okay, so now I can factor out a common factor of x, but instead of factoring out x, I'm going to factor out negative x. That'll get rid of the negative sign in front of my leading term. So I factor out negative x, so that leaves me with 4x squared plus 3x minus 1 equal 0. So I get negative x times, and then I need to factor the 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. So I've got 4x, x, 1, 1, plus, minus. Set each factor equal to 0. I've got negative x equals 0, and you don't have to bring the negative sign down. I'm just going to do it. Or 4x minus 1 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. So here I divide by negative 1. I get x equals 0. Here I'm going to add 1. I get 4x equal 1. Divide by 4. I get x equal 1 fourth. Here I'm going to subtract 1 to both sides. I get x equal negative 1. So my solutions would be negative 1, 0, and one fourth. I get three answers there. All right, let's take a look at some more. Okay, here when I go to factor this, I notice this is a perfect square trinomial. This can be factored into 2x minus 3 squared. And like I said, if you're not sure about the factoring, you can watch the videos I have on factoring. It goes into all of this of how how each one of these are factored. Now, this is just the same. This is 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. Well, all I have to do here is just set 2x minus 3 equal 0 and then solve this equation. So I get 2x equal 3 divide by 2. I get x equal 3 halves. So my only solution here is 3 halves. Uh, let's take a look at this one. We have four terms here, and to factor four terms, we factor by grouping. We split it down the middle. We're going to factor out an x squared, so that's going to leave us with x plus 4. And then here I'm going to factor out a negative 25, 
and that leaves us with x plus 4 that equals 0 so now I factor out the x plus 4 that's x plus 4 times x squared minus 25 equals 0 and so the x squared minus 25 factors so that's x plus 4 times x minus 5 times x plus 5 equals 0 and then I set each factor equal to 0 and I solve so here I get x equal negative 4 x equal 5 or x equal negative 5 so I get my solutions negative 5 negative 4 and 5 and there's my solutions I think we got time for another one let's uh, look at this I have x squared minus 9 equals 0 so I'm gonna factor this so I get x minus 3 x plus 3 so I get x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0 so I get x equal 3 or x equal negative 3 so my solution would be negative 3 positive 3 and another way that you could write this is you could also write it plus or minus 3 Okay. you could write it like that now on this problem let me show you one other thing we have x squared we have x squared minus 9 equals 0 now notice our our x term is missing we don't have an x term if you have just an x squared and a number something raised to a power and a number then another way we could solve this is we could add 9 to both sides and that would give us x squared equals 9 and then we could take the square root of both sides so that would give us x equal and then the square root of 9 is 3 but it's plus or minus 3 and so our solution would be plus or minus 3 this right here this this method here is called the even root property okay you can use that on a problem like that I hope this video helped and like I said if you're if you're if you weren't sure on how I factored some of these uh, watch my videos on factoring uh, I hope this helped thanks